I have the, the honor uh, and the privilege to moderate a little debate based on the lecture and inspired by the lecture of Martin McKee. And for that debate, we have two very distinguished guests, speakers, debaters, and I'd like to introduce them to you. First of all, Ingrid van Engelshoven. She is a city administrator of The Hague since 2010, and she will respond to uh, McKee from a big city perspective. Secondly, Jan Anthony Bruin, a professor of immune pathology at the Academic Medical Center of the University of Leiden. He's a senator of the VVD, and he will respond to uh, McKee from a more, na not from a nationalistic, but from a more country perspective. There are short responses. They will give a short response. They will be in English, and afterwards, you'll have a debate in Dutch. And I would like to give the floor to Ingrid van Engelshoven. Well, thank you, and I thank the Scientific Council for giving me the floor for this, for brief reflection on Professor McGee's provocative contribution today. Um, and I appreciate uh, uh, Professor McGee pointing out a couple of difficulties in modern day society, and especially uh, him stressing some social aspects like mental uh, health. Other than you, I think I say this with optimism. And let us be clear, Uncertainty and change are not new. I think there's one thing we shouldn't do, and that is that act as if we can go back to the past. If we just leave the EU, no longer make trade treaties, and close our border, borders, everything will get better. I would like to go into three things that could help us face the challenges. The first thing, Invest in people on a more permanent basis. Start at an early age, as early as possible, and make sure that people can keep on learning throughout their lives. Make this an individual right. We should give people a solid footing, uh, and especially on the labor uh, market. There is, uh, Professor McKee touched on, upon that, and I think we should give people who need that the outlook to a permanent contract. And as an administrator in a major city, um, you soon learn that people's well-being is often largely shaped by their own living environment. The block you live in, your street, your neighborhood. And this means that we should keep investing in the quality of that living environment. Will this solve everything? Of course not. And decentralization in the social domain helps us to tackle these issues cohesively. Health problems can often be resolved more efficiently by debt support than by doctors. And we need to acknowledge that, where, that there will always be groups of people who cannot find their way on the labor market unaided. And I think these are some of the major challenges we face for the coming period. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much for you. Thank you for your response, Jan Anthony Bruin. The floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Professor McKee, for that eloquent keynote speech on the growth of precariousness and why it matters for health. I was asked to briefly reflect on it from our national point of view. In the past few years, steps have been taken to ensure that our country emerged strong from that crisis, and successfully so. However, leaving the economic and financial crisis behind us does not imply that all people already feel and experience a resurrecting sense of security or a reduction of precariousness, if you wish. So there is work to do in the coming years. Accessibility of care will demand a continued firm grip on the rising cost of it and an extra investment of 100 million euros in care for the most needy, including those in inner cities and neighborhoods. We will also have to guard solidarity in care, now that the young and the higher educated pay increasingly and already about half the cost of care of the elderly and the lower educated. Coping with precariousness also means excellent education for all. McKeel rightfully stressed the great social and health importance of job security. It must be made easier and less expensive for employers to offer permanent jobs. 
Thus, restoring job security in the Netherlands will demand stimulating economic growth by investing at least 10 billion euros in infrastructure, tax relief, diminishing cost of labor, and innovation and research. Job security will also demand revising the laws and regulations governing our labor market. Flexible contractual arrangements combined with social security, or flex security, as they call it in Denmark, which you already alluded to. In sum, now that the financial and economic crisis has been dealt with in our country and structural reforms are in place, precariousness with respect to our, our way of living dictates the political agenda for the coming years, also in our country. It will demand a carefully calibrated role for government and has rightfully been the subject of today's keynote speech by Professor McKee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>